to the concepts video on points on circles using sine and cosine. Alrighty, so the whole concept behind this uh, video is going to be that it's useful to relate angles and distance along a circle, meaning like arc length, uh, to x, y coordinates that we already know and the equation of a circle. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's say we're starting with a circle, okay, and we have like radius r for our circle. Okay, and uh, let's say this point is x comma y, right? So we already know that the equation of a circle is r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, okay? Or in another way, you could say uh, x minus h uh, squared plus y minus k if there's any kind of shifting going on. But we'll kind of just ignore that for now. We're just going to look at circles centered at the origin, so h and k are 0, 0, 0, both, right? So we're going to focus on this guy right here. Alrighty, so let's say let's take a closer look, okay? And let me draw a bigger circle for that. Alrighty, so let's say we have a circle like this, okay? And here's um, a line, right? And here's r. So let's say x y. This is the point x y, right? So what does that really tell us? That says we're moving x in the x direction. That's kind of weird, but anyways, at some distance x in the x direction and some distance y in the up down direction, right? So we have this triangle that's formed here, actually, and we can say that this is uh, an angle here, a certain angle, right, created by that triangle. So if we look, we can see that we have this kind of relation, or that, like I said, this triangle created, right, so something that looks like this, r, y, and x, and that's this is how we define uh, the sine and cosine functions, okay? So sine of, a, uh, sine of an angle is denoted by sin, of that angle, whatever theta is, is equal to uh, y over r, okay? Cosine is defined as cos of uh, some angle, of that same angle, is equal to x over r, okay? And um, also, just for the sake of previewing, so this is a preview, not necessarily in this section, but there's also another function called tangent, and these are all called trigonometric functions or trig functions, okay? So I'm just going to write that because it's a cool word, trigonometric uh, functions, okay? Because it has to relate to trigonometry, okay? So tangent of our angle, uh, or I'll just write tangent for now, and it's denoted by tan of our angle is equal to y over x. Anyways, so the whole thing here, why I introduced the tangent as well, is to say that there's this funny little saying, and uh, you say soka toa, okay? And it's really useful. It sounds kind of funny for at first, but it's really a lifesaver sometimes uh, when you come to do some trig in the future. So soka toa, this just means that our sine, sine function, is obtained by taking um, whatever side or whatever leg is opposite to you. So let me, con let me uh, write this on the next slide so we have more room. So let's say, I'm going to redraw our triangle here. Okay, let's say this is r, uh, this is y, this is x, right? And then we have our angle. So here's our angle sitting here. And we said sine is equal to y over r which as we can see is actually, so r is gonna be our hypotenuse, right? So r is our hypotenuse, okay? y is the opposite leg, okay? And x is the adjacent leg because it's right next to our angle, our angle touches it. And opposite just means it's, it's um, not touching our angle at all, okay? So here's our useful phrase again. So I'll just write it down here at the bottom. So, ka, toa. Okay, so again, the S means sine, and that actually denotes opposite over hypotenuse. And we can see that that holds, right, because we have the opposite side, which is Y, over our hypotenuse, which is R. Okay, so that's where the SOH comes from. How about cosine? This is equal to uh, X over R, according to our formula. And the C, so that means cosine, A means adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the C-A-H and tangent. Again, like I said, this one's a preview one, but it just fits along with the saying. So tangent is going to be y over x, which is opposite over adjacent. Okay, that's how we get our y over x. Alrighty? So let's do an example using sine and cosine now. So it says the point 3 comma 4 is on the circle 
is on the circle of radius 5 at some angle uh, theta, okay? So now we're supposed to find cosine of that angle and sine of that angle. All right, so here's our circle of radius 5, and we have a point 3, comma 4. So let's say it's somewhere around here, right? And we know our radius is 5, so radius is 5, and our point is 3, comma 4. So that means we're moving 3 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. So we have this uh, triangle here, right? And I'm probably going to draw this not to scale, but anyways, that looks a little too vertical to me. There we go. So that's a good triangle there. So we have some angle, theta, right, that we rotated through. This is 3 and this is 4. I just blew up the triangle, right? And here's our angle theta. Okay, so we're supposed to find cosine of theta and sine of theta. So cosine of theta, remember if we, uh, if we recall Sokotoa, Sokotoa, so this would be adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So adjacent, what is the adjacent leg? That would be 3, and our hypotenuse is 5. Okay, so cosine of our angle is going to be uh, 3 over 5. And we can also label this, if you don't want to use the Sokotoa, you could always visualize this as saying r, this is y, and this is x. And then our cosine theta is just x over r, which is the same thing that we got. Okay, sine of theta, let me use this notation now, is going to be y over r. Okay, so that would be 4 over 5 this time. Okay. So now let's take another look at sine and cosine of our uh, our formulas here. So we have sine of theta is equal to y over r. Okay, uh, when we have something like this, when we have r is here, theta is here, y and x. Okay, so when we have a triangle like that, sine of theta is equal to y over r. We also have that cosine of theta is equal to x over r. Okay, those are just the set formulas, right? So we can actually rearrange these to get like x and y by themselves respectively. So y is equal to r times sine of theta and x is equal to r times cosine of theta. So now if we recall the equation of a circle, right, a circle centered at the origin, which is r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, then we can take whatever we found for x and plug it into this x spot here and whatever we found to equal y and plug it into the y spot. So if we do that we have r squared is equal to x is now r cosine theta and then squared plus parentheses uh, r times sine theta squared. Okay and now all we have to do is distribute that uh, exponent of 2 right it's both of those so we get r squared is equal to r squared times cosine squared theta, and I'll explain that notation in a side note really quickly, plus r squared sine squared theta. So just like a side note here, side note, oftentimes um, cosine raised to a certain power is denoted as cosine n uh, to the, or er, cosine n of theta. Uh, for some reason, they just stick the exponent right there, and it's a little bit confusing, but just keep that in mind that that's what it means. And the same thing for sine as well. If you have sine theta raised to a certain power, um, they'll usually say sine of that power and then theta. I don't know. Beats me why they did it, but anyways, so that's how it's denoted. This just means cosine squared theta and sine squared theta, okay? So the thing is now what we can do is divide by r squared everywhere, right, on both sides of that equation, and we get 1 is equal to cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, okay? And let me write this on the next slide because it merits its own slide. Basically.